What's up guys, it's Ethan, and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing the long-awaited spear guide. As some of you guys may know, uh, I've been basically playing a Tori my whole career in this game, and I'm probably considered one of the best spears in the world. So how this guide's gonna work is, it's just gonna be covering what all the moves do, strings, combos, what to do in certain situations, thoughts on matchups, stuff like that. But yeah, let's get into it. Starting with Neutralite, this move is basically your main poking tool. It's a quick triple jab that is directly in front of you. It deals 15 damage if all of them are connected. It starts very quickly, and though it does not hit stack like other weapons, it's good for punishing careless positioning. Next up is Sidelight, the bread and butter grounded attack. This move is somewhat long and predictable, but in return has a huge hitbox. And on top of that, it sets up in the same spot for follow-ups at all helps. It's a move with medium risk with his recovery frames, but can lead to high reward if hit. All right, moving on to D-Light. This is uh, the best move in your kit, if you want me to be real. It is an amazing anti-air that catches people jumping, like so, or people just landing from the air. On top of that, it has true combo follow-ups such as Downlight Sair, Downlight Recovery, and Downlight Nair. Moving on to the aerial kit of this weapon, we're going to start with Neutral Air. Nair is your main poke damage tool when you're in the air. On top of that, it has a 360 degree hitbox that hits everything around you, and it hits grounded as well. On top of that, it has an amazing juggle opportunity because it says it for more Nairs. And it also has huge string follow-ups for huge damage, which we will cover later in the video. Alright, now that we covered what nair does we're going to move on to something more different with this move so this move has three angles right if you hit the bottom part of it it spikes down if you hit the front part of it it hits to the side and if you hit the stacked part it sends straight up it is crucial to learn all these hitboxes so you can maximize your strength potential on this weapon next up is side air this move has long range good force and is extremely versatile at earlier helps, this move can be used for combos as well as cool strings which we will cover later on in the video and at later helps, this move is used as a KO option. Next up is down air. People call this move the pogo for a reason and I'm sure we all know why. It has extremely fast startup, it's amazing at edge guarding and it can lead to multiple downers at early helps. and at later helps, it can be used to string it to Sair at around uh, 160, like so. Next up is Recovery. This move has short vertical range, but wide horizontal range. At early helps, Recovery can lean into Nair, which can just lead into more damage, or maybe a Gimp on the top of the map. On top of being a really good string tool, it can be used as a kill option at later helps. On top of this, its exhausted version is good for catching people off guard really really good by the way last but not least is ground pound aka the helicopter live recovery this move has wide horizontal range and slow startup however its hitbox size makes up for it it's good for edge guarding because it covers the whole wall and it can be used as a mix-up after going for dares and theirs on the edge guard on top of this it can be used as a way of landing when you have like no jumps left and you just need to get back onto the stage like so see i burn out all my options i have nothing left i have no dodge my soul just ground pound like so on top of that it has insane good potential if used right and we'll cover that later in the video okay now now that that hard part of the video is done because that took me a little bit we can finally start the cool stuff aka the dodge reads so let's get into it it's pretty simple what you want to just want to do is you go for a side light you wait for the dodge go for the double down light cider of course you don't have to go for the cider you can lead into recovery as well another thing you can do is you side light in there and then you can lead that into a sair as well and this is just uh character dependent but you also have side light insect this should work on Queen Nye, Bryn, Nash, pretty much every spirit character. So yeah. 
All right, next up is dodge up. Honestly, one of the most annoying and common options people do when uh, basically they're at later helps. So what you want to do is you want to go for the side light, jump, D light recovery, like that. You can go for side light, jump, D light stair as well. Uh, you can go for side light, jump recovery if you're not feeling too safe with the down light. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Moving on to dodge away off side light, pretty simple. You just want to do a dash G light after your side light, like so. And you're just going to go for the typical double D light. Um, you can lead it into a recovery as well. You can also do a side light nair if you're not sure which way you're going to dodge. The side light nair covers that dodge. And on top of that, you can do side light into it. Character dependent, of course. Some characters you do have to uh, dash with it. So, alrighty, moving on to dodge down. Now, this is pretty simple, of course. You can go for the side light. If you're another side light, you can go for the GCD down like Sarah. Um, if you're grounded, of course, you don't have to go for the GCD light. You can just go for this full combo. Stage, they tend to dodge down once they're hit off stage, like so. So, what you can go for is another side light, D light, say like that. So, it should look like this. Uh, go for something like that. And uh, this is character specific. You can go for side light, side light. That's it by uh, right here. And that can be used as a kill confirm. Alrighty, now we're moving on to the diagonal down dodges. So, of course, there are two options. They can dodge diagonally down into you or dodge diagonally down away from you. We're going to be covering the away dodge first. So it's the same as basically covering the down dodge. You're going to side light, side light, down light, down light, stair. Um, and then if they dodge down left or into you, you go side light, dash in reverse, double side light. Uh, yeah. And last but not least of the side light dodge reads, we're going to be covering the diagonal up option. So these are a bit more difficult to cover, but basically what you want to do is you want to go for the side light, dash forward, jump, GCD lights there. And if they dodge diagonally in, this makes it way easier. So what you just go for is you just go for the side light, and then you go the reverse, D light there, like so. All right, now that we covered uh, how side light works, just like the basic dodgeries and stuff, we're going to be moving on to neutral light follow-ups. Now, for neutral light on Spear, uh, like I said earlier in the video, it basically sets up at the same spot. So people normally have four, escapes op four escape options that they tend to do. Uh, for first off, they tend to dash back into you, or they'll either like dash away. So I'm just going to set the bot to dodge right, because they can't really dash away because training mode is really bad. But uh, you just chase them. Or you can just go for the end light chase side light. Like that. Uh, another thing you can do is that some people like to jump. So after you go for two neutral lights, hit them twice, they'll try to mix it up with the jump because they don't want to get caught again. So what you can do is you just go for the end light dash down light. You know, pretty simple stuff. Another thing people like to do is that. Even though they're gonna jump, they're gonna insta dodge to avoid the D light. So what you want to do is, let's see. People like to uh, dodge in, by the way, as well. So you neutral light, dash forward, they jump in, just reverse the D light like so. Okay, moving on to side air. As you guys know, at six decks or higher, um, at early health, sair into end light is true. But you don't always have to go for that combo. You can condition them, always go for it, but then you can mix it up with something else. So, as you see, Sarah and Light can't dodge. Like so. But some things I like to do at early hills is that once people are hit by Sarah, they're immediately expecting the neutral light at white because they know it's a true combo. So they're mashing their dodge button, hoping that uh, you mess up. So you can catch them like this. You Sarah while landing, and then you dash behind them and you reverse side like so. Oops, I got turned off jump, sorry. Uh, here we go. And this catches a lot of people. Uh, 
of course people die certain ways so you can just like play reacting off that but that's basically like a cool little serum mix up that you can do so moving on to uh downlight serif follow-ups shout out to matt for helping me by the way at early helps serif of course and sends out a spot where you can overextend strings as long as you know like what your opponent's gonna do right so i'm gonna show you guys punishes for the most common options that people do starting with the diagonal dodge in so here we go Okay, now that we got the diagonal dodge and punish, another common option is that people like to fast fall after your downlight stare. So this is what you can do. Like so. Okay, moving on to the next downlight stare follow-up. If you guys remember earlier, I talked about ground pound and how it has like insane gimp potential. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for a double downlight stare and from there people like to dodge in after that. So if they're a bit damaged, they'll be around right here. But since your ground pound sends left or right and not down like any other normal ground pound, you're able to gimp off of it. Just keep in mind before you go for this that you want to be facing towards the stage when you go for the ground pound so they're sent into the blast zone. Same way going here, just make sure you're facing towards the stage. And yeah, let's show you what it looks like. Move forward a little bit, like right here. Alright, perfect. Like so. Okay, now we're moving on to the next section, and that's going to be how to play Grounded with Spear and maintain stage control. So, of course, you know, I can't really show that in, uh, you know, training mode. So, we're going to be queuing an experimental match, and I'll get back to you guys when I get a game. Here, I'm going to show you what a good Spear player does. Once you learn how to use Neutralite, this is what you can do. As you see, he's just burning his options because he's really scared, and now I have stage control. He cannot do anything to me. You see, he's burning his options so I can just catch him with his jump. He has nothing. He's gonna dodge towards the weapon, of course, so... See, I'm just winning with Neutralite. He can't come up to me. He's scared. I'm applying all the pressure in the world right now. He has no way of hitting me because he's not sure how to approach me. And then from there, you can just mix it up. After you condition people with Neutralite a lot, you can just end up going for the edge card or something like that, you know? And you made them disconnect. That was a little example of how to play Grounded Spear and maintain your stage control. Hope you enjoyed. Moving on to the final segment of the video, we're gonna be talking about matchups. Now, Spear into most weapons are 50-50. I think it beats weapons like Gauntlets, Guitars pretty well. Uh, hammer, Lance, Sword, uh, Cannon, Scythe, you know, those type of weapons. I think those are just 50-50s. And then Spear loses to Axe and Bow. Bow is an extreme counter pick to Spear, one of Spear's worst matchups. I think that thing is 70-30 at best. And then with Axe, it's just 60-40. So yeah. Now that I've covered everything that I need to in the spear guide, I just want to show you guys some clips of what good spear players look like and how to apply everything you've learned. So let's get into it. That's great content. Right <laughs> yeah, we need more matches. Everybody cheer for Ethan, let's go. <laughs> yeah, get up in your energy and then equally <laughs> we'll divide the energy <laughs> yeah. in game five. Yeah, and then stop immediately after <laughs> yeah, that yeah. and everybody 50 50. It's all about energy dispersion. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Oh, he's got your energy down. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh. Okay. Five off of the uh, defense stance. 
that's very scary with the way Snowy was playing earlier. We were seeing him hit long axe strings. We were seeing him hit some long cannon strings as well. That is going to delete the health of Ethan. That's going to put so much damage so quickly. That side air from like the middle of the stage almost KO'd. That low defense is going to come into play. A bit of a standoff here. Ethan on that soft platform, but finds his opportunity to come on in. Snowy hitting the side light. Can't connect with those finishers though. A down light nair. Could knock out, but Ethan finds the pogo to take.